Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number eight from the October 2021. Um, this is from the GCE paper, the uh, UK A level paper, paper two. Um, and this is from, uh, this is called 9MA002. This is like the A level paper, paper two from the A level, pure maths two. And this is kind of corresponding to our international A level syllabus. Um, in P4, it's to do with um, explicit, sorry, implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation, that's what it's related to. So I'm taking this question as a, some extra practice. And, uh, you know, I, I know it's a slightly different style to what we are used to. And sometimes there is a change in styling questions. So I'm just taking, I'm just like, you know, giving an example of this question in case we might get a similar type of change in style. So that way, you know, we can be ready for it. So first of all, it says the curve C has equation PX cubed plus QXY plus 3Y squared equals 26, where P and Q are constants. And they're asked to show that dy dx is equal to APX squared plus BQY over QX plus CY, where A, B and C are integers to be found. Okay, so we've got to basically differentiate this using implicit differentiation. So we start off with px cubed plus qxy plus 3y squared equals 26. So we have to differentiate every term with respect to x. Okay, now p and q are constants. Okay, they are constants. All right, so um, just like numbers. So when I differentiate px cubed with respect to x, I'm going to get three times px squared so whatever number is here three multiplies by that number and then i take one from the power and then i've got plus q times now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use um the uh, product rule for x times y u is equal to x and v is equal to y and u dash is equal to one and v dash is equal to when you differentiate y with respect to x you get dy dx Okay, when you differentiate a y term with respect to x, you differentiate it as normal, so like this would be, this would become 1. And then you, um, using the chain rule, because it's 1 times y to the power of 0, multiplied by the differential of what's inside the function, which is dy dx. Okay, so when you use the, the product rule, it's y times, it's v times u dash, that's y, plus u times v dash, which is x times dy dx. Don't forget the dy dx part. And this, when you differentiate with respect to x, you differentiate as normal. So it's 2 times 3, which is 6, y to the power of 1. And then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is y. That gives you, again, dy dx. So you, every time you differentiate a y term with respect to x, you must multiply by dy dx because you're multiplying by the differential of what's inside the function. And the differential of 26 is 0, of course, because it's a constant. So now we've got to make dy dx a subject of this. So we've got 3px squared plus qy plus um, qx dy dx um, plus 6y dy dx equals 0. And now we need to um, keep dy dx terms on one side. So I'll keep this qx dy dx plus 6y dy dx on one side, and I'll subtract these from both sides, so I'll end up with um, negative 3px squared minus qy, and then I can take the common factor here, which is dy dx, so qx plus 6y equals negative 3px squared minus qy, I can divide both sides by qx plus 6y, so I'm left with dy dx is equal to minus 3px squared minus qy over qx plus 6y. And they've asked us to find, um, okay, in this form, let me just bring that form down here. Okay, so this is the form that they want us to write it in. So we can see here that a, we have to find the values of a, B, and C. So we can see here that A is equal to uh, negative 3. 
APX squared. And we can say that B is equal to negative 1. And we've got QX plus 6Y, so C is equal to 6. So that's what we have here um, in terms of A, B, and C. Now for part B, it says, given that the point P, the point P, which has got the coordinates minus 1, minus 4, lies on the curve C. Um, so that's uh, and the normal to C at P has this equation, 19x plus 26y plus 123 equals 0. Find the value of P and Q. Okay, so we can make two equations, one from each of these. Now, if the point P lies on the curve C, it satisfies the equation of the line, the curve C. So that means when x equals minus 1 and when y equals negative 4, this equation is satisfied. So I can replace um, the x with minus 1. So I have p times minus 1 cubed. And that's q times minus 1. And the y with minus 4. So q times minus 1 times minus 4 plus 3 times negative 4 squared equals 26. That will lead me to the equation. This is, going to, this is going to be minus p plus 4q, and that's 3 times uh, 16, which is 48, plus 48 equals 26. So I'm left with the equation, um, you could say, minus p plus 4q is equal to 26 minus 48, which is minus 22. Let's just make sure of this. 26 minus 48 minus 22 good all right i can even write this as p minus 4q equals 22 same thing all right so that's one equation and then from the other bit of information the normal to c has equation 19x plus 26y plus 123 equals zero plus 123 equals zero all right that is the equation of the normal so let's find the gradient of the normal. Okay, let's re rearrange this to make y the subject. So you have 26y equals minus 19x plus 123. So y is minus 19 over 26x plus 123 over 26. So we can say that the gradient of the normal is equal to minus 19 over 26. Therefore, the gradient of the tangent is equal to the negative reciprocal, so the opposite side and the fraction upside down. That means that dy dx, okay, is equal to 26 over 19 at p, minus 1, minus 4. So we can say when, when x equals negative 1 and y equals negative 4, dy dx is going to be 26 over 19. So we take our expression for dy dx. I'll just bring it down now. Whoops. <laughs> Wrong thing. I'll bring it down now. That's our expression for dy dx. Okay, and I know that um, for this expression, we have when x equals negative 1 and y equals negative 4, this must equal 26 over 9. So you have minus 3p times minus 1 squared minus q times minus 4 divided by q times minus 1 plus 6 times minus 4 um, that's 3p minus 3p forgot the p there yeah and um, that's equal to 26 over 19 so this is going to give me a minus 3p plus 4q over negative q minus 24 equals 26 over 19. If I cross multiply, I have 19 times negative 3p plus 4q equals 26 times minus q minus 24. So I have 3 times 19, that's 30 plus that's 57, negative 57p plus 4 times 19, that's like 4 times 20 minus 4, that's 76q, equals minus 26q, and you've got 26 times 24, which is 624. Yep, that's minus 624. 
So let's bring everything to one side. We're going to have minus 57p, um, minus 57p, 76 plus 26 is going to be, that's 90, that's 102, right? 76 plus 26, that gives us 102 plus 102 Q is equal to minus 624, um, I think, Three, three will go into each of these. No, that's going to be 14. Okay, yeah, so that's equation number two, not one. So we have two equations now. We have equation from up here, which was from the point lies on the line, which is P minus 4Q equals 22. So we have P minus 4Q equals 22. So I guess to solve this, it's probably easy to use some sort of substitution. P is equal to 22 plus 4Q. So I have minus 57 times 22 plus 4Q plus 102Q is equal to minus, minus 624. So let's just work what that is, minus 57. We've got minus 57. So 57 times 22 is 57 times 22 is 1,254, negative 1,254. And that's going to be minus 4 times 57. So 4 times 57. That gives us 228. So that's minus, minus 228. Plus one, uh, 228Q, sorry, plus 102Q is equal to minus 624. So you got 102. So you got, um, that take away 102 will be, that will be one, minus 126. Minus 126Q is equal to, you got negative 624. So you got basically 1,254 minus. 624, that gives us 630, so Q is equal to 630 divided by 126, negative, that gives us 5, so that's nice, Q equals negative 5, so therefore we can say P is equal to 22 plus 4 times minus 5, so P is equal to 22 minus 20, so P is equal to 2. So we've got the values of P and Q here. It seems a bit strange at this stage. It might not work out, but they've worked out to be nice, easy numbers. So it seems like we've got the right answer. And there's the answer to this question. So basically, we used two facts. We used the fact that we knew the gradient or an expression for the gradient from the last question. And we also knew the equation of the curve in terms of P and Q. And we know that the point lies on the line C, so that this this part of this information helps us, you know, to deal with this equation. That we know that this this point satisfies this equation, so we can make an equation from that in terms of P and Q. And we know that the normal to the curve at C, um, at P, sorry, it has the equation given by this. So this is to do with the gradient. The normal has got something to do with the gradient of the curve. The normal is perpendicular to the gradient of the curve at that point. So we find, we rearrange this to make the y the subject so we can read the gradient of the normal. The negative reciprocal of that would be the gradient of the curve. So dy dx would be the negative reciprocal of the gradient of this curve. And then we used that, equated that to that, and we ended up with another equation. And then we had a pair of simultaneous equations in P and Q. Looked a bit weird at this stage, but it worked out to be nice, easy numbers. And we've ended up with the answer. So that concludes question number eight from October 2021. As I said, from this um, ALGCE paper from the UK A-level. Um, <clears throat> other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that should appear in this region over here. Other questions from implicit differentiation from P4 can be found in this playlist. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.